Hi everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to another romance recommendation video. Um, if you can't tell I've been reading a ton more than even usual during our you know social distancing time and I wanted to keep making recommendation videos so you can keep reading and I'll keep reading and we'll just keep it keep it going because you know that's what we want to do, right? So let's get into it. Today I'm doing a Steamy Romance Rex Part 2. I did Part 1 of these, I think it was over a year ago. Um, and let's get into it today. So I have a these by Steamy, you know, it means we got some good, heartbreaking, sexy sex scenes in these. That's where I'm coming from with steamy. So the kind where the tension just rolls off the page. There's no like, will they, won't they? Like you just, you know, you just have a gut. You have a feeling in your gut that this is going to happen and it's going to be good. So let's get going with one that, I mean, these are all pretty recent reads for me because um, I wanted to bring, you know, newer recommendations to this and not books I've talked about a ton. So one I just read that was just like, whoo, holy crap, was called Big Man by Penny Wilder. So this one is about a girl who, I, I think it's her uncle or her, I believe it's an uncle, I think it's a male relative anyway, who dies and leaves her half a share of his farm and the land around it. Um, but she doesn't know that it's only a half share until she gets there. She has to leave the city and go to this land and finds that half of it was also left to the neighbor, who is this super sexy country boy, very lumber, sexual, very large hands, if you know what I mean. There's a reason this is called Big Man. I'm just being honest with you. And it quickly, quickly, the heat turns up. Um, this is a case of they knew each other when they were younger, when she used to still live in the country. Um... She knew this guy. This isn't quite a hate to love. She mostly is annoyed because she has to share this place with him. And I wouldn't consider it like full on antagonism. It's just more like there's some tension. Um, there is a bed sharing incident and things kind of explode from there. This was very, very sexy, very quick, very fun. Um, and then there's a lot of dirty talk in this book. So if that's something that you like, you should definitely give this one a go because they talk about everything that's happening when it's happening. And you're just like, okay, the author's describing this to me as well as you're explaining it. And it's just, it's a lot, but it was super fun and quick read. And I really enjoyed myself. Next, I want to talk about Unbreakable by Melanie Harlow. Melanie Harlow just hits all the right buttons for me. They're romantic comedies. Usually they are just a little bit of angst usually, like there's not a ton of strife in her books. This one does have just a teeny bit more than normal because of the situation. So we're dealing with two divorces. So we're dealing with, we're dealing with Sylvia, who has just recently got divorced from her husband. And she has an incident at a, there is this charity event where there's like Santa there and stuff for around the holidays. And her husband, like all of the people she thought were her friends, are gossiping about her husband and um, her husband's new fiance and how she is pregnant already and how they're just like, she just feels so unwelcome by people she thought were her friends. And so she packs up her two kids. They are 10 and 13. She packs them up and brings them home to Cloverly and decides to have the holidays there with her family and just try to get herself back on track. And so she runs into Henry, who has also been recently divorced after him and his wife tried tirelessly to have children and his wife refused to adopt. And Sylvia just start talking. They strike up a conversation about winemaking because he's the wine specialist there. And she decides to get tutored by him. And it's immediately apparent that they are extremely attracted to each other. And Henry doesn't know what to do with this because he doesn't want to bring her the baggage that he already has. And Sylvia is worried about how her kids will feel because they're not reacting well to her husband's new love interests. And so she doesn't want to make things harder for them. And so there is a little bit of angst in this one, but it's 
all like really understandable and there's not so much a miscommunication trope or anything as how are we going to do this and do it right by my family and you. And it was really good. And then again, the point of this, this is a steamy book. They have some very fun situations in the winery and other places. And Melanie always writes really steamy sex scenes. There's a lot of, I just can't get enough of you. Let's do this right now. And I just love that. I have a thing for it. Um, next, let's talk about the deal. Now, this has been going around BookTube for a very long time. Most of y'all know about it already. But this was a new read for me. And this really broke my, um, my L. Kennedy seal for me. I hadn't read really anything by her. And then I finally, for Romanceopoly, pulled a um, read. Which one was this? I can't remember which prompt I read it for. But this one is a case of this is a sports romance. This is a college romance. This is a nerd romance. I think I read it. That's why I read it. I read it where one of the protagonists is a nerd. And so we have Hannah Wells, who has some trauma in her past where she was raped and now she cannot um, orgasm with a partner anymore. And so there's this guy that she's really attracted to. And then there's this guy named Garrett Graham who needs her help studying for a class that they're in. And he is a hockey player and she doesn't have time to tutor anyone. She's very busy with her own course load. And so he finds out that she likes a football player, the guy that she's attracted to, and he agrees to help her get him. And then when he finds out the truth about her, what has been going on, she asks him for help getting used to sex again and to being able to orgasm. And I'll tell you what, I'm realizing it's kind of a kink for me when a girl can't orgasm and then there's a guy who's like magic hands for her, basically, which again, there's just something about the fantasy of that and I don't care. That's what books are for and I won't regret it. But this one is so cute and it got me into college romances. It got me into Elle Kennedy and it got me into sports romances, which I never thought I would like. And there's even another one of them on this, two more on this list because of that. So thank you, Elle Kennedy. I love you. This is super sexy. Garrett Graham has magic hands. He does homework. He's not just magical. He does homework so he can help this girl have good sex. How cute is that? Like really, it isn't just like, oh, honey, you've been sleeping with the wrong men. Let me make it happen. No, he looks into the psychology of what may cause a rape victim to not be able to orgasm. He looks into what he can do to make her more comfortable and then him being her friend, how he can help her. And it's so cute that a college guy does that for her because he cares and it's adorable. Cuteness. Okay, let's talk about the... Then we'll talk about a Serena Bowen book. This one is called Hard Hitter. This is the second book in her Brooklyn Bruisers series. And this one is about Patrick O'Doul, who is the enforcer and team captain of the Brooklyn Bruiser team. And he starts having the hots for Ari, who is the physical therapist for the team. And there's some cool things about Patrick. Well, it's not a cool thing, but so Patrick has had to fight for everything in his life and he cares for his team, for his men. And, but he's also like getting a little bit older and getting beat the shit out of him. Every game is taking its toll. So he's supposed to be seeing the physical therapist, but he hates being touched because he's always been touched in anger and pain previously. And so Ari finds a way to help him relax during therapy. And there starts to be this connection between the two of them. And it is so hot. Like it is, holy crap. Now Ari, her ex-boyfriend has been giving her some problems. He won't move out of her house, which she owns. Um, and he has moved into her basement. He keeps changing the locks down there, causing trouble. And he started threatening her to, in certain ways. And so Patrick gets, you know, Patrick gets a little defensive for her and is kind of, you know, he's looking out for her. She ends up staying at his place a couple times and things escalate from there. 
I am a ho, ho, ho for Serena Bowen Smut. I'm just going to tell you right now. I've read almost every book she's written. There's just two little duets yet that I haven't read. She has another book coming out very soon, which is the next one in this series called Sure Shot, and I just can't wait for it. And this book was just so, so much fun. So actually, the first three in this series were published by Berkeley traditionally, and then the rest have been self-published. So you can find this at Barnes & Noble just like this with this sexy man candy on it. And oh my god, this book's so hot. So then I want to talk about one more sports romance. And that one is Stay. And so this one's by L. Kennedy and Serena Bowen. And it came after their Him and Us series. They have this series called WAGS, which is Wives and Girlfriends Club, basically. And so this one is about a hockey player who is divorced and he has two kids. And there's this woman who she's also divorced, but she still works with her ex-husband. They are best friends, actually, which is kind of funny. And... She runs this business where they're basically like concierge shoppers. So celebrities um, in the form of, you know, actors, actresses, um, hockey players, um, senators, like all these people, they will be a personal shopper for you. And if you're not home a lot, like they can walk your dog for you. They can um, pick up food for you. They can do your dry cleaning and stuff like that. And so for about six months, this girl and this hockey player, they've been communicating and she, her like... Um, the way that her screen name is, it spells H-T-I. So he's been calling her hottie in his head. And he has this camera system. So he's able to see like when someone comes into his house and when they don't. And after he had an issue with one of the employees um, kind of messing around in his place, um, hottie, who is actually the co-owner of this business, starts personally doing his jobs for him and he starts having a crush on her and so he asks her out um and it's adorable and who this book guys when the heat gets turned up with these two it is so so sexy there's actually a scene where so they're both like super into this this isn't even a dubious consent issue it's just that they're really getting into it and she kind of like so she like shies back for a second and oh god this is so cute and he's like what oh my god what happened and she's like you just you overwhelm me so much that it frightens me how much that I'm attracted to you and like mm, it just makes my toes curl up because I just love that kind of like raw magnetism where she she was married to her best friend and this is another case of she didn't orgasm often because it wasn't about her when they were having these interactions. Um, her ex-husband, he's a great guy. It's just they weren't chemi chemically compatible the way these two are. And this book, mm. And there's always dogs involved in the WAG series. So it's like a double cute thing because it's a wives and girlfriends club. But it's also there's pets involved. And it's adorable. Ooh, turn my light back on. So I definitely suggest... This one you could totally read as a standalone. Um, the best part about this like sports universe is that whether it's Elle's series or Serena's series, they show up in each other's. So if you're someone who likes reading standalones that are connected like that, it could be really fun. So yeah, so now let's talk about two historicals. Because yes, in this steamy Rex video, I actually found two historical novels that just needed to be included. So the first one I have is Falling into Bed with a Duke by Lorraine Heath. So this was actually a pick that you guys picked for me to read this one um, when I did my historical romance you pick. And I'm so excited, so excited for this. Oh my gosh. Um, and I loved it so much. So this is the first book in the Hellions of Havisham. And this one is about this girl named Minerva, who after six seasons, she hasn't found a husband and she knows that she's going to be resigned to being a spinster. So what she does is there's this club called the Nightingale where the women have all the control. The women wear a mask and they go in and they can pick a man that they want to have an interaction with. And he can never ask what her name is or try to find out who she is or he'll never be allowed back in the club. So the men get the opportunity to sleep with beauty, with these women, but they can never know who it is. So, and the women are afforded privacy and they get to keep their reputations because nobody knows who they are. 
So then we meet the Duke of Ashbury, or he goes by Ash, who he goes to this club sometimes, and this girl approaches him and gives him the nod, and he likes to photograph people. And it's so cool. It's hard to explain because when I say the premise of that, it sounds like, ooh, he likes to take lewd photos, but no, he likes to photograph the human body for art purposes. And so he asks her, may I take a picture with you? And then, or not with you, may I take a picture of certain parts of your body, usually either the hands or the feet, because he finds those the most elegant. And she's just a little too weirded out by that. And they end up having this really tense, hot interaction and when he finds out that she's a virgin, he's like, don't do it this way, sweetie. And it's it's a little condescending, but it's not because he understands what she wants. But he's like, but I'm not the one to do that for you. So she's like, OK, so but when she continues to come back, he doesn't want her to pick anybody else. And he realizes that he's falling for her and she's falling for him, but she's not going to marry anybody because she doesn't feel... She feels that he'll be disappointed once he learns who she is because she's considered a wallflower and not beautiful and blah, blah, blah. And he's actually in need of a fortune as well. And she has one. So you'd think they could just answer each other's problems. But anyway, this was extremely sexual and tension filled. And even though the sex is like delayed, it like just builds the tension because it's delayed and it's so hot. Whew, oh my god, this whole series so far, I've read two of the three and they all have just been like the sexual tension has like left a crick in my neck because it's so good. So you should definitely check this one out. And then the last one I have on this series just blew my freaking socks off. And that's Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Claypes. This is the first book in the Hathaway series, which is about these five siblings who their family, fortune, and home is falling to ruins. There is four girls and one boy, and the boy is lost in grief when uh, the woman he was supposed to marry died of scarlet fever, and he lived and he wished he had died. And so the oldest daughter, Amelia, she is trying to hold her family together. So we start the beginning of the book, her going into town and trying to find her brother. Um, because he has been going to the gambling den and going to the prostitutes and all these things and she is trying to hold her family together and so she goes to um, Lord St. Vincent's Club so this is a, the series that takes place after the Wallflower series and she finds Cam Rohan who we've met previously in his interactions with Daisy and Cam is the one is like the uh not the manager, but like he oversees some things at the club and he refuses to let her in and like won't tell her if her brother was there or not. And she, Amelia just doesn't have time for her. She's like, I don't care that I'm a woman. I need to find my brother. He's in danger. He's the one in charge of everything. And she's like, I'm going to kill him. So Amelia is just balls to the wall, brassy. She has to be to hold this family together. And Cam is immediately enchanted by her. He helps her. He kisses her, sends her on his way, doesn't ever expect to see her again because Cam is actually half Romani, half Irish, and he is so sexy. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much like Romani culture built into this book and the next because the second one is also about another Romani um, who actually is the Hathaway's friend, like he's grown up with them. And Cam is kind of an outsider from all sides because the Romani look down on him for working for a wage because they don't really do that. And the English look down on him because he's half Romani. But St. Vincent has come to trust him and care for him. And then he meets them again because the Hathaway's home is only a few miles from Stone Hall or from where uh, Lord Westcliff lives. So when Cam goes to visit them he ends up running into Amelia again and then it is Cam takes that second meeting as fate and he just goes all out in wooing Amelia and there's different like Romani cultures mixed in with it about how he goes for it and just 
the fire between these two just steamed my eyelashes reading it. And oh, I just adored it so much. I've loved every book in this series so far. I just have one left. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much. And Cam and Amelia just fire. So there you go. There are some books that I think are super steamy. I hope there's something in this for you. Please tell me your favorite reads. And yeah, I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can find some more of those right here.